I'm Dr. Denise Hurd, Director of Research for the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Christine Wong and Danielle Graham regarding one of their current research projects funded by the U.S. Poultry Foundation. Dr. Wong is a research scientist and Danielle is a program associate at the University of Arkansas within the Department of Poultry Science. Welcome both of you. Congratulations on your funded research project and thank you for sharing your insight with us today. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. So your study is titled Realistic Multi-Species Challenge Model to Evaluate Treatment Methods to Prevent Colonization of Pathogenic Bacteria in the Hatching Environment. Can you please begin by giving a brief overview of the project and explaining the need for this type of research? So we're doing a uh, doing research on a hatcher challenge model that more realistically mimics that microbial bloom that occurs at the hatching phase in that hatcher. Um, at approximately day 20 day of embryogenesis, there's a huge increase in humidity and temperature in that hatcher environment. And that allows for a very large increase or bloom of the microbes that are um, present. This includes both uh, pathogenic bacteria as well as uh, beneficial bacteria or microbes. This could be present on the egg or just in the hatcher um, environment itself. And when this bloom occurs or this increase in um, microbial number occurs, it can contaminate any of these hatching chicks. And when these chicks are contaminated or um, colonized by these pathogenic bacteria, they can develop acute infections and subclinical infections. And with the acute infections, you can get mortalities up to day seven to 10 days of age. Or in the subclinical infections, you can get lifelong immunosuppression or um, negative impacts on performance. So it's important to do research to find methods to decrease this colonization of pathogenic microbes in the hatching environment and decrease the exposure that these chicks have to these pathogenic microbes because early colonizers of the gut have profound impacts on the overall gut health, gut microbiome of these chicks. And it helps develop their immune system. It, it affects their long-term health. So those early colonizers or pioneer colonizers of a gut is very important and we don't want pathogenic microbes to be colonizing, but beneficial um, microbes. And currently in commercial settings, we use formaldehyde fumigation to disinfect the environment, but formaldehyde um, acts on all the microbes in that environment. So not only does it kill the pathogenic microbes, but the beneficial microbes. And that's not necessarily what we want for the health of the chick. Formaldehyde also doesn't penetrate the eggshell. So any microbes that have um, penetrated into the shell post-lay is not susceptible to that formaldehyde treatment. Um, so when those um, contaminated eggs hatch, these contaminated chicks can cause horizontal transmission of those pathogenic bacteria to the um, non-infected chicks or the naive chicks. Formaldehyde is also associated with a lot of health risks. It can cause damage to the tracheal epithelium of chicks when it's used at high amounts. It's an irritant and it's a carcinogen. So you'd like to get away from the use of formaldehyde fumigation if you can. And the only way we can do that is to do research on different products and methods that we can use to decrease that pathogenic microbial load in the hatcher environment and promote the colonization of beneficial or pioneer colonies for the gut health of these chicks and to stop the use of formaldehyde. Um, to do that and to evaluate products, we need to have a challenge model to um, figure out which products and which methods are actually useful and which ones are not. Um, previously published challenge models for um, Hatcher blooms are usually single bacterial isolates or single microbial isolate challenges. So only using salmonella or only using E. coli or one particular um, isolate is used in these, pre these published old reports for analysis. Um, that's not actually a realistic um, view of the environment though, because in the environment, in the hatcher environment, 
we had many microbial species um, um, at the same time. They interact with each other, they can compete for each other for resources, they can also work synergistically with each other to colonize. So this development of a multi-species challenge model would be very beneficial for um, industry and in simulating real commercial conditions to evaluate these products. Very interesting. Can you share a little bit of your experimental design and procedures? Yes, that's what, um, so the way we got started is uh, we needed isolates and uh, we did this by selecting um, isolates from an exploder egg homogenate. Exploder eggs are simply just non-viable embryonated eggs that can be reservoirs for both non-pathogenic and pathogenic microbes. And as these microbes replicate within the egg um, of these non-viable embryonated eggs, they can actually explode. And then the contents are then spread throughout the cabinet. And so um, the viable embryonated eggshells are then um, contaminated as well as the surfaces within the hatch cabinet. And so to create this uh, exploder egg homogenate, we removed contents from exploder eggs um, at day 18 of embryogenesis. And from this, we recovered uh, both bacterial and fungal isolates and selected those that are relevant to commercial hatching conditions. Um, this included Enterococcus faecalis, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Aspergillus fumigatus, and also um, we included two E. coli isolates. And in a pilot trial, uh, we determined that application of this pathogen mix challenge to the blunt end of the eggshell at 19 days of embryogenesis did not uh, negatively impact hatchability. So moving forward for model development, we plan to evaluate the effects of this pathogen mix challenge um, to the eggshells um, in conjunction uh, with formaldehyde fumigation um, on the presence of uh, circulating microbes in the hatch cabinet. And we'll do this by sampling the hatcher environment, um, collecting fluff samples um, at the time of hatch, as well as whole body chick rinses post-mortem. Uh, additionally, we're going to collect gastrointestinal tract samples for enumeration of relevant enteric microbes. And um, all of these samples are going to be plated on a specific auger media for enumeration. And after the model um, is established, uh, we're going to move forward evaluating some non-proprietary uh, probiotic strains. Um, we all know that early exposure to beneficial microbes is essential for proper uh, gut development and can have a positive impact on the resident microbiota during the neonatal phase, as well as throughout life. And um, you can have substantial impacts on performance as well. And so we're gonna use this uh, newly established uh, uh, multi-pathogen challenge model to evaluate a spray application of probiotics um, as an alternative to formaldehyde fumigation, as well as a novo application of probiotics um, and their ability to prevent colonization by these pathogenic microbes. Um, and these studies will evaluate early performance as well. And any products or methods that have encouraging results, that being a reduction in total pathogenic uh, microbes within the hatching environment or uh, a reduction in uh, pathogenic microbial colonization of the gut, uh, will retest um, these um, products in replicate trials to ensure consistency in product results. Thank you. It sounds like you guys have uh, quite a bit of work ahead of you. <laughs> what do you anticipate will be sort of the, the overall impact of your work for the industry? We hope that our work will allow industry to query out any um, non-performing products and to identify the promising products that have um, good data showing that reduction in pathogenic microbes in the environment. For integrators, when they're developing their um, biosecurity plans for the hatcher or disease prevention or pathogen prevention plans for the hatcher environment, um, they're bombarded by many products, many companies trying to sell their products um, with um, claims that it can do this. But most don't have the data to back it up or it's fairly loose or weak data. And that's not very helpful for the integrators or industry to try to make decisions on what is be best for the health of their chicks and the health of their workers. So having this challenge model will be very useful so that we can provide the efficacy data that industry needs on these products with all of these um, claims to fame. Um, it'll also be nice 
um, to replace the use of formaldehyde fumigation. It'll be um, useful to increase that um, chick performance that occurs. Um, if there's too much formaldehyde, it does have that negative effect on chick performance long-term. And it does have um, a, a reducing effect on the immune system development and the tracheal epithelial damage in the chick, if we can get rid of that formaldehyde fumigation, we can increase um, chick health and animal welfare for these chicks. And if we remove the um, use of formaldehyde, we can increase worker safety in these hatcheries. Thank you. As, as you have described your project, it appears to be quite unique and novel. Um, are you guys aware of any similar projects? And if so, how does yours differ from those? Well, over the last few years, uh, we have uh, begun uh, looking into how to establish lab uh, laboratory challenge models um, to evaluate alternatives to formaldehyde fumigation. Uh, but one of the downsides to those models that we have established previously is that um, they've only involved uh, one singular species. Uh, we've done this with wild type E. coli, um, also a virulent um, APEC E. coli. Uh, and the way we did this is that we uh, uh, applied the E. coli uh, via novo application at day 19 of embryogenesis to a very small subset of the eggs within the cabinet. And um, this cedar challenge uh, successfully uh, resulted in horizontal transmission to naive chicks or those that were not uh, intentionally infected and also effectively increased the number of circulating coliforms in the hatching environment. Um, however, once again, challenge with the singular species is not really uh, reflecting what goes on commercially. And so I think that the uh, current uh, challenge model that we've proposed here uh, is more realistic and could um, have a substantial impact uh, on the industry based off the results that we obtain. Great, and, and one last question for the both of you. Um, is there anything else uh, regarding this project that you would like to share or any future studies? Okay, so embryogenesis equates to about 30% of a broiler chicken's life, um, embryogenesis being 21 days to, to hatch. And it's essential that we have efficacious alternatives to that formaldehyde fumigation to promote, promote that colonization of the beneficial microbes and to establish um, good pioneer colonies or colonizers. Danielle? Um, no, that, I think that was all that we needed to add. Um, we will say that we are very grateful to the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association for funding this research and providing the support we need so that we can do the research that actually benefits industry directly. Um, All right. Well, I just want to say thank you both very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to give us some insight into what you'll be working on over the next couple years. I know um, the industry as well as myself will be looking forward to your findings and your data and, and seeing how things develop with your project. Uh, with that, I thank you guys so much again and good luck with your work and we look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your opportunity. Okay.